Hey, friends, God bless you. Beautiful day today. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It doesn't say I feel. It says I will. I choose to rejoice in the goodness of our great God. He is eternally good forevermore, no matter what's going on around me, no matter what I see, no matter what anybody's doing, no matter what the news says, God Almighty is God Almighty for all of eternity, and all of His goodness is forever. And we're propped up. Our lives are propped up on that goodness. So glad to have you with us today. Wonderful word from heaven today. We're going to talk about anchors in the Bible. I want to bring you a word from heaven today. An anchor for our souls. The Bible talks about an anchor. Now, you know what an anchor is. You use it on a boat or on a ship. But the Bible talks about an anchor for our souls. And what an encouraging word this is from heaven. One of my all-time favorite passages, I know you get tired of hearing that, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 6. I want you to listen to what your father's got to say to you. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17. Our great God determined to show more abundantly to the children of promise the unchangeableness of his word confirmed it by an oath that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie we might have strong confidence and strong encouragement who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope he has set before us this hope we have as an anchor of our souls, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil where God is, even where the forerunner has entered for us, Jesus having become our high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Listen to what the Bible says. Your father is determined to show you more abundantly the, that you can have an anchor for your soul, something that can hold you. And the Bible talks about us having an anchor of our souls that is sure and steadfast and gives us hope. I don't know if you know what an anchor is, but an anchor is what holds a boat steady. An anchor is what holds a boat in place, especially anchors are designed especially to hold in a storm. When you're in a storm, uh, you're out of control. And boats get out of control in a storm. Now, when there's no storm and everything's fine, uh, you're in control. But in a storm, a boat is out of control and it's blown whichever the waves and the winds take it. And the scripture talks about that, blown about by every wind. And the anchor, if you've got an anchor, an anchor is what holds you strong and safe in the storm so that you're not moved and you're not either your boat's not turned upside down or it's not destroyed on the rocks. Uh, I think it was three years ago, maybe, a former national football NFL player uh, took three friends of his. There were four guys, and they went out. He bought a boat. He, he really was new at it. He didn't know that well what he was doing. And he invited some friends to go fishing with him. It wasn't a very big boat. I think it was 26, 28 feet long, which is not very big in the ocean. And he took his friends fishing off the Gulf Coast of Florida. They went out to the Gulf fishing miles offshore. And an unexpected storm came up, and uh, they really were sort of knew what they were doing. And their anchor did not hold, and their boat was flipped over. Three of them died. One was found clinging to the hull, uh, and it cost them their lives. If their anchor had held in, in a storm, if your anchor will hold, it can keep the, the nose of your boat, the front of your boat, into the storm. And it's a rough ride, but you'll, you can live. But if your anchor doesn't hold, that anchor doesn't grip and hang on, then your boat's going to be flipped around, flipped upside down. And that's why it is so important to have an anchor that holds. An anchor will save your life in a storm. Well, that's why the Bible talks about our Father giving us an anchor for our souls in a time of storm. Well, dear ones, do I need to sit here and tell you that this nation is in a storm? Do I need to sit here and tell you that the Bible is correct in what it says? It has prophesied that in the latter days a storm would come on the earth. That as Isaiah chapter 60 says, many places, the book of Revelation, that darkness will cover the earth, deep darkness the people. And today we're seeing a storm cloud gather across this land. People are worried. They're nervous. There is, a, there is an absolute financial train wreck coming to this nation, a financial storm difficulty. We're in a relationship storm. Relationships are people are divided. 
We're, we're just in a time of great storm in this nation. The Bible said this would happen. He prophesied it clearly. Well, an anchor is what holds you in a storm. It's what gives you, it's what keeps you safe in a storm. That's why the Bible talks about anchors all through the scriptures and that the anchor is the hope of our, our Father is determined for us to have hope and confidence. And that's why He's given us an anchor for our souls. And that hope, let me read it again, verse 19. This hope, the hope we have as an anchor of our souls, it is sure and steadfast. There's something we can hang on to today. We're watching times change, government change, people change. It's crazy. But there is something that never changes, and that is the anchor of our soul, and it is our hope. Now listen to me. You, you can live without food and water and air for a while, but you can't live without hope. Human hearts are designed to have hope, and when you lose hope, you're in trouble. And that's what we're seeing in this nation today. People are losing hope. Our hope has been in our banking system. It's been in our government leaders. And now, as the Bible says, we've got blind leaders leading blind people further into the ditch. Our hope's been in ourselves. It's been in our finances. It's been in our great systems. The difference, we're losing, all of our systems are, are breaking down today and we're losing hope. Well, there is a place of hope today. There is something that is not breaking down. There is something that is eternal. There is something we can build our lives on. That's called hope. And it is the anchor of our souls. And when you have that kind of anchor, you do not drift. The storm may howl and rage around you, but you are secure. You're confident. And you are not headed for destruction. Now, the Bible often also talks about, all through the Bible you see storms, constant storms. And there are physical storms in the Bible but physical storms in the Bible are a representation, a picture, if you please, of spiritual, relational, national storms in history. And the Bible often talks about that. I, I want to look at one of them today. Acts chapter 27 is one of the great storms. And it was when uh, our beloved brother Paul, who wrote half of the New Testament, he was being transported and uh, the, the ship they were on got into a terrible, terrible storm. It came up unexpected. You ever had an unexpected storm come up in your life? Have you ever been just cruising along, sunshiny days, and all of a sudden a storm came up? I love to fish offshore. I don't do much anymore now that I'm getting older. But I used to love to fish offshore. I'd take my boat many times by myself, and I'd just take off, usually leave from the port at Beaufort, and I'll take offshore, head out to one of the reefs, or just head out somewhere to fish beautiful sunshiny day and i've been caught a few times in storms and i mean those storms are fierce when they come up like that i one of the worst one i is 25 years ago i was with some friends and we'd left from holden beach and man it looked like a black curtain dropped out of the sky and we got into one of the worst storms uh, we got in and it did much damage to the boat it cracked glass uh, screws were backed out but we made it safely back i think by the kindness of our great god but let me ask you this all the pictures of storms in the Bible. Have you ever just had a storm hit you out of nowhere? Have you ever just been cruising through life and all of a sudden a doctor says there's a tumor? A, a husband walks in and says, I'm leaving. Your company just drops you and you have no way to provide for your family. A friend turns their back on you. Things just, difference. storms are life. If the Bible teaches us one thing, you will live through storms. And storms, the unexpected storms of life occur in everybody's lives. These storms hit us. They blindside us sometimes. They come out of nowhere. And how many times as a pastor for 40 years have I seen families and people, everything was wonderful one day and all of a sudden the next day they were in a storm, an unexpected storm. Well, that's what the Bible teaches us about these storms. And this is another one of those great pictures in the Bible where they were headed somewhere, and all of a sudden, an unexpected storm hit them out of nowhere. And uh, everything was great, and the storm hit. And let me read to you what the Bible says. Because we were exceedingly tempest-tossed in this storm, neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small storm beat on us, and all hope that we would be saved was finally lost. You ever been there? I'm watching people now. Everything's going great, and then a storm hits. And because the storm is so great and the, they can't see the sun, and after a while, hope is lost that we would be saved. And people begin to give up. I'm seeing that today. 
people are losing hope in our, our systems, our educational systems, our financial systems, our, you know, our, our, our uh, economic systems that can provide for people. And we're, we're just, this is a nation that's losing faith in, in our institutions today and that the storm is on us now. And of course, the scripture says that they were so afraid that they would be destroyed and the night came and they couldn't see anything. They were in the dark. They were in a storm and in the dark. You ever been there? You ever been in a storm and it seemed like God was gone and you, the pain was there and you couldn't see anything and you didn't have answers? I want you to listen to one great verse. Fearing lest we should be destroyed on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the storm and prayed for day to come. Let me quote that verse to you again. They're in this storm. It's dark. And they didn't know what to do. Fearing, Then fearing lest we should be destroyed by the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. Why did they drop the anchors? Well, the Bible says it teaches, and of course, you know, maritime history teaches us you drop anchors to hold you so that you're not destroyed. And the, these anchors were their hope. And I think there's a reason that the God who wrote the Bible put this verse in the Bible to teach me and you something. That when we go into storms, unexpected storms, listen, I, everybody's in one of three places. Would you agree with me that everybody's in one of three places? They're either going into a storm, they're in a storm, or they're coming out of their last storm headed for their next one. If we've learned one thing, life is a series of storms. And that's why we so need an anchor for our souls. And in particular here, they dropped four anchors in the storm and waited for the light to appear again. My goodness, let me give you from the Bible the four great anchors of our soul that hold us in the storm. And I'm going to give you four anchors from God's Word. Dear ones, listen to me. You lay hold. You take these four anchors and you let them hold you in the storm. You say, well, Brother Brian, life's pretty good for me right now. I'm healthy. My family's healthy. Got the best job I ever had. We got plenty of money. Everybody's happy. It's just wonderful. Well, then do me a favor and save this for the day when you will need it because you will need it. And I want to say there are four anchors they drop. Anchor number one, the anchor of our soul is the love of God. Dear ones, everything in this universe is propped up on God's heart. The Bible talks about the love of God. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so that people could be reunited with Him. Dear ones, the Bible teaches clearly in Psalm 100 verse 3, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has created us and not we ourselves. You exist because God wanted you to be here. Let me say that again according to the Bible. You exist because God wanted you to be here. Before, let's, let me quote to you from Psalm 139. Before I knit you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Jeremiah chapter 1. Before you were born, I called you. The Bible teaches that we were predestined to be sons and daughters of God. Why in the world would the Almighty create me? knowing what I'd be like, knowing that I'd sin and be far from Him. It was the love of God. Everything in this universe is propped up on the heart of God and the love of God, that He has loved us clearly. Let me quote to you from Jeremiah 31, 3. Listen to this. I have loved you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you to myself. The only reason you exist is because God loves you, cares about you. And He drew you to Himself in loving kindness. His desire is the desire of a father. I love Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. I was predestined to be adopted as son. We were predestined to be adopted as sons and daughters, according to Him. Dear ones, God looked at us before we were born. He saw you before you were born. And His heart was tender toward you, and He loved you, and He cared about you. And His only purpose to create you was so you, He could adopt you as a son or as a daughter. Our family... My daughter and her husband just adopted a little baby that's beautiful. And they love that child. That child has done nothing for them. She didn't earn it. She didn't deserve it. She didn't ask for it. They saw that child. They loved her. They brought her into their home. They're, they're loving her, caring for her, sacrificing for her. It is the love of a couple, a love of parents poured out on this child. You know, that's the love of God. Let me quote it to you again. I have loved you with an what? Everlasting love. Do you know, listen to me. The love of God is like no human being. I've heard people say the love of God is like a mother's love. No, it's not. I'm sorry, you're wrong. The Bible says you're wrong, and I'm going to show it to you. The love of God, the Bible says, is undeserved. 
You can't, you didn't do anything to cause him to love you. And listen to me, there is nothing you can do to stop him from loving you. I don't care what you do. I don't care how bad you sin. I don't care. You curse his name. You will never change his heart toward you. What do you think? That is what the message in Luke chapter 15 of the prodigal son is. As a prodigal son did everything he could to hurt his father. And the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 15 that when his father saw him, he felt compassion for him. That boy's great sin never changed. the. Listen to me. The heart of God is unchangeable. His love toward you can never, there is nothing you can do to stop him from loving you. There's nothing you did to start him loving you. He loved you before you were born. You hadn't done anything. And there's nothing you can do to stop him from loving you. The anchor of our souls for eternity is the love of God. The undeserved love of God. Not only undeserved, it's unexplainable. There is no way you can explain why the perfect God of heaven who created all this beauty, why he cared about me so much. I want you to listen to the question that David asked in the Bible. This is a question that my mind has pondered many times. I live way out in the country. We live way out in the country where there are no lights around. And when I go out at night, cut the lights off on our house, I go out at night and the stars are brilliant. You can't see stars in a city or where there are lights. Too much ground light. But I see the majesty of the stars and I'll look up and I'll contemplate the stars. Listen to what David said in the book of Psalms. When I consider the heavens, the moon, the stars, the work of your hands, what is man that you are mindful of him? Listen to that great verse that God put in the Bible from the mouth of David. Listen to it. When I look at the vastness of the universe that you have created, who am I that you should care about me? Another time after David had been so blessed, he went in the temple by himself, got down on his knees and prayed and said this, Who am I and what is my house that you have brought me so far? Demons, what a, that is the great question to contemplate. You who created all this majesty, you fill the universe. You created it. Who am I that you care about me? Dear ones, that's the unexplainable love of God. Why his heart burns with love for his children and for people. You'll never be able to explain it. But you can believe it, and it is the anchor of your soul. My life is propped up on the heart of God, the love of God. And not only that, not only is it undeserved, unexplainable, it is unchangeable. You cannot change the love of God. There's nothing you can ever do. It was one of the greatest passages in the Bible. I'm going to read it to you from Isaiah chapter 49. People talk about the love of God is like a mother's love. Not really. Listen to what the Bible says. It was during a time of great difficulty when God's people were going through a difficult place. And listen to what they said. But the people said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done that, friend? Have you ever been in a bad place and you thought God didn't, he had turned his back on you? Have you ever sinned so bad that you thought he has abandoned you? Have you ever ask where is God while I'm suffering you ever ask that well, that's what they're doing they're in a bad place and they said Zion said the people said the Lord has forsaken me the Lord has forgotten me uh, the disciples when they were in a storm they said to him Lord do you not care when Martha was so upset in Luke chapter 10 she saying came to Jesus said, do you not care then was the storms of our lives cause us to wonder if God still cares about us and they asked this question in Isaiah 49 it's verse 14 the Lord didn't, has forgotten about me. But listen to his answer, verse 15. He said this, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Listen to what he said. Could a mother forget that she has a baby? Could a mother forget that she has a child? Could you imagine that? Could you imagine me uh, asking, you know, when our children were young, I say, hey, sweetheart, where's, where's Caleb at? And she'll say, who? Who's Caleb? That's the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, that a woman could forget. Let me quote it again. Can a woman forget her nursing child, her little baby, and not have a tender heart toward the son of her womb? Listen to what God says. Surely they may forget. As incredulous as it seems, there may be some women who turn their back on their babies. God said it can happen. Yet I will not forget you. Listen to what God said. A mother will turn her back on her baby before I'll turn my back on you. A mother will walk away from her child, the child of her womb, before I'll ever walk away from you. Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. And then he goes on to see in verse 16, Look, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. You are always on my mind. It was the love of God is undeserved, it's unexplainable, it's unchangeable. And the love of God is the anchor of our soul. It, it's 
when there's a storm, I, I don't understand what's going on. I don't know why things are going like they are. But I have determined one thing. God loves me and he will never stop. Listen, the love of God is determined by one thing. I don't care what I see or what happens. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what happens to me. The Bible said in 1 John, by this we know his love. He gave his son for us. Dear ones, the cross is what settles God's heart toward me. God so loved the world, he gave his son. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? I don't care what happens to me. I don't care whether I understand what's going on or not. I look at the cross and I know the creator of this universe loves me. He cares about me. The anchor of my soul is not what I understand. The anchor of my soul is not how I feel. That changes like the waves of the sea. The anchor of my soul is the undeserved, unexplainable, unchangeable love of the living God. And it is the anchor that holds us through the storm. That, that's the anchor of our souls is the love of God. And the Bible said He wanted determined to show us how immutable His, His promises are gave us an anchor for our souls. It is love toward us. Let me mention three more real quickly. Number two, the anchor of our, another anchor of our souls is the goodness of God. Dear ones, if God's not good, we're in trouble. But my life is propped up on the goodness of God. Religion says your life is propped up on how good you are. But it was this Bible teaches me that my life is propped up on the goodness of God. Not how, that's why we don't sing how great I am. We sing how great thou art. Dear ones, Religion says if you'll be good, God will bless you. Nothing could be further from the truth. Psalm 118, 1, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. He is good. And His loving kindness toward us endures forever. Listen to that. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. And His loving kindness toward us endures forever. Let me quote to you Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9. The Lord is, not was, the Lord is gracious full of compassion, slow to anger, great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and His tender heart is over everything He does. The Bible tells us that the Lord is good to people. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. And by, by the Bible, let me tell you something. Let me tell you the bottom line. This great God is so kind and so good. He is looking for somebody to be good to. And his, my life is propped up on the goodness of God. Numbers chapter 6, let me quote it to you. Listen to what he said. He told the ministers, say this to my people so I can be good to them. Tell them, the Lord bless you. I want God to bless you. I really do. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine on you and be generous to you. May he look on you and smile with favor and give you peace. Listen to what he said. And so... Shall they put my name on my children, and I will bless them? Can't you hear the heart of God? Let me quote to you from Psalm 81. Oh, that my people would listen to me. I would crush their enemies. I would feed them with the finest of wheat. And with honey from the rock, I would satisfy them. All through this Bible, I see this great God who created the heavens and the earth and created people looking for somebody to be good to. My favorite is Psalm, excuse me, 2 Samuel chapter 9 where he says, is there somebody that I can show kindness to? I'm looking for somebody to show kindness to. Matthew chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount, the Bible said this, Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and persecute you. And then the Bible said this, If you love those who love you, what credit's that to you? You shall be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Listen to him. He tells us to love our enemies. Bless people who curse us. Be good to people who are hateful to us and spitefully use us so we can be like our Father. Can't you hear it? It was He is so good to those who despise Him and persecute Him. You may be sons of your Father. Listen, He makes His Son rise on the evil and the good. He shows such mercy to everybody. It was the kindness of God, the goodness of God is the anchor of our soul. Religion says, you don't deserve that. Grace says, praise God, Jesus paid it all. I, I, I wouldn't hold up the best five minutes of my life for him to do anything for me. Jesus paid it all. There was Jesus went and suffered at the cross. Let me quote to you 2 Corinthians 8 9. You know the kindness and the goodness of our Lord Jesus, that though he were rich, yet for your sakes he became poor that we through his poverty might become rich. Dear ones, when I pray, I don't pray in the name of how good Brian's been. I pray in the name of Jesus. 
And it was the sacrifice of Jesus. By his stripes we are healed. Not by my goodness. It was the Lord is good. And our lives are anchored in the goodness of God. They're anchored in the love of God. They're anchored in the goodness of God. Number three, our lives, our, lives, our futures, every day is anchored in the word of God. Dear ones, he has given us his word. I'm telling you, if you don't cling to his word today, the, the Bible teaches clearly lies have filled the land. The Bible says in Revelation 12, and here's a revelation, Satan poured water out of his mouth and the flood carried the land away. Satan has filled this nation with words, a flood of words and lies in this nation. And we're being destroyed by the lies we're hearing. But thank God, thank God, we have an anchor of our souls, which is the living word of God. Let me quote to you John 17, 17, in the final prayer that Jesus prayed. This is the last prayer he prayed, and he prayed it for the people then, and he prayed it for me and you now. He made it very clear he was praying for us. Listen to what he said. Perfect their lives, make their lives wonderful by your word. Your word is truth. Dear ones, it's not everybody's opinion. There is a truth. There is a word, and the word of God is truth. And the Bible tells you and I, listen to one of the things we need to do. This is 2 Peter chapter 1. If ever there was a word we need to hear from heaven and a verse we need to hear today, it is 2 Peter chapter 1 where it tells us this. We have the word of God conform, confirmed which you do well to pay attention to as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns. Do you listen to that? The Bible says when you're in a dark place, the Word of God is the light that you pay attention to. Well, we're in a day of darkness in our nation. We're, we're as confused as a termite in a yo-yo. We don't know which ends up. We think that women are men and men are women. And God have mercy. We're as clueless we're lost as a ball in high weeds in this land right now. But let me tell you something. There is a light. There is an anchor. And it is the eternal word of God that we hold on to. And our Father has given us, He's given us this word to hold to. And this word is, it becomes our hope in this day. Let me tell you what the Bible says about all the garbage that's being preached today and told on TV and the media and the talking heads and the university uh, professors and the... Listen to what the Bible says. All of the glory of man is like grass. Here today, gone tomorrow. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Let me quote that again. All of the words of men are like grass, flowers. Here today, gone tomorrow. What's popular today will be gone tomorrow. But the word of our God endures forever. Dear ones, the word of God is our anchor that we hold on to. Boy, we need, a, we need a light today. Psalm 119 verse 105 says this, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. I don't want to hear what preachers are saying. I don't want to hear what government leaders are saying. God have mercy, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear what the talking heads on TV are saying. I don't want to hear what the boys down at the general store are saying. Tell me what God has to say about the day we're living in. Tell me what God has to say about my family. Tell me what God has to say about the future. I want to hear the voice of God. Let every voice be silent and let God's word speak. God's word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. There are so many paths out there today. Everybody's talking about all these different ways and hogwash. Narrow is the path and narrow is the way that leads to light and few there be that find it. And you know how you find how to take care of yourself and your family and get to where you want to be? The word of God. Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Dear ones, we need a light today. And the anchor of my life is the word of God. I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to trust the experts. I'm not going to trust, I mean, preachers have lost their minds today, turning from the Bible and preaching these myths and this nonsense. Stick with the, the Bible is your anchor. And let me give you one more. Number four, the fourth anchor that we throw out in the storm is the promises of God, the love of God, the goodness of God, the Word of God, and the promises of God. I love the promises of God. I have a book filled with promises from the Creator of the universe. His promises are our anchor in the storm. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. We have been given exceedingly great and precious promises that through these promises we might be partakers of God's kingdom and escape the destruction that is in the world through lust. Listen to that. We have been given exceedingly great and precious promises. And through these promises, you can be a partaker of God's great kingdom 
and escape, escape, escape the destruction that is in the world right now through lust. Dear, we've been given promises from the Father, and His promises are our anchor in the storm. Let me, uh, let me give you a picture of how this works. Another storm, Mark chapter 4. Jesus said to His friends, His disciples, His learner. Disciple means learner. Get into this boat, and He said, We are going to go to the other side of the lake. Listen to me. That is the Word of God. That's the promise of God. He told them, get in the boat with me. Come with me. We're going to the other side. And the Bible said, as they sailed, a storm came up. What's the Bible saying to me and you? All these storms in the Bible, what does it say? Unexpected things happen to us in life. Unexpected storms come up. People turn against, friends turn against us. Calamities happen. Health problems come up. Relationship problems. Financial problems. Churches go crazy. God have mercy. Storm after storm. And a storm came up, and it was a fierce storm. And you know this passage, Mark 4, the Bible said Jesus was asleep during the storm. You ever felt like that? What's that saying in the Bible? Have you ever felt like that when you're in the greatest need, God's not listening to you? Like He's asleep, He's not there? That's what it's a picture of. And listen to what the storm was so great. And they woke Him up and they said, Do you not care that we are dying? It was, they thought they were going to die. The storm was so great, they thought they were going to die. What did they say? When a storm comes up, what did they say? Do you not care? Dear ones, do not let the storms of your life cause you to wonder if God cares about you. Don't you ever let the don't let anything that happens in your life, physically, relationally, emotionally, don't let anything that ever happens to you cause you to question whether God cares about you. Look at the cross. You look at the cross. That man cares about you. 1 Peter 5, 7 should be one of your anchor verses. Cast all of your problems and cares upon Him once and for all because He cares about you. I wish you could know how much God cares about you. The Bible says every He has numbered every hair on your head. He doesn't know the number of hairs. He knows the number of every individual hair. Why do you say that? To let you know how well He knows you, how close He is to you, how intimately concerned He is about you. God knows you. God loves you. God cares about you. And they said to even the disciples said, do you care about us? And they thought because they were in a storm that God didn't care about them anymore. This is what they said. We are dying. Sometimes storms cause us to think that we're going to lose everything. We're going to get killed. But you know the rest of the story. Jesus stood up. He spoke to that storm. He said, peace. And that storm, that lake became like glass and it became quiet. Then let me tell you something. God Almighty rules the wind and the waves. And then he said to them, where's your faith? Where's your faith? They had no anchor in the storm. What was their anchor? Their anchor was the promise of God. Let me quote the next verse. And then they came to the other side. Let me ask you a question. What did Jesus say to them? Get in the boat. We are going to the other side. He made them a promise that they were going to the other side. Dear ones, God Almighty promised they would get to the other side. The storm that they encountered caused them to wonder whether His promise was true or not. All they had to do in that storm was say, what is the promise of God in this situation? Did He not promise us that we would get to the other side? Then was if they had put faith in His promise, it would have been the anchor for their souls that would have held them through the storm. Listen to me. You need to know the promises of God. The promises of God are the anchor of your soul. When you get in a storm, instead of staring at the storm, you need to say, what did He promise me? When your family goes through a storm, you need to hold to the promises of His family. Let me, let me give you one of the greatest promises you'll ever hear. This is Hebrews 13, 5. So that we may confidently say, The Lord is my helper. And the Bible said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hold to that promise right there. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because Thou art with me. Dear ones, all of the promises about our families, our children... Our few, we need to hold to those promises. And then perhaps one of the greatest, some of the greatest promises, dear ones, one of these days, I got news for you. Nobody lives to be 150. One of these days, we're going to reach the end of our road. And we watch people get, I had a call yesterday morning when a, a dear lady passed away. This body dies. Well, what, you know, what are we going to do then? What about the promises of God? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, we know. We don't think we know that if this body is destroyed, we have a body in the heavenlies with which we long to be clothed. Listen, I, I'm looking forward to it. As my beloved brother Paul said in Philippians chapter 1, 
My time of my departure is at hand. I know not what I shall choose. To depart and be with Christ is far better. Nevertheless, to stay with you. Dear ones, listen. We, we are as a people, we can face death with confidence because of the promises of God. Listen to this. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself so that where I am, you can be there also. Praise God. I mean, the Bible in Hebrews says that death is the last enemy. People are, fear, people are more afraid of dying than anything on this earth. And the scripture says that he rescues us from that fear. Praise God, the believer that has confidence that the anchor of his soul is the promise of God. He's not afraid of death. He starts looking forward to it. Now, I want to finish my course with joy. I want to finish everything he's put me here to do. But praise God, hallelujah, when I'm done, I'm going over yonder. Oh, dear ones, listen to me. Can you hear the Bible? Let me go back to our original verse. Hebrews chapter 6. Our Father, wanting to give us something we can hang on to, an anchor of our souls, this hope that enters within the veil where Jesus is. He has given us an anchor for our souls, and you and I, during a storm, we can throw out four anchors and wait for the morning. Praise God, the, the love of God, the goodness of God, the Word of God, and the promises of God. Those are the anchors of our lives. They're the anchors of our souls. They're the anchors of our family. We're not, we're not just wondering what's going to happen, and nobody knows the future. Hogwash. My Heavenly Father writes the future. He holds the future. I don't know what my future holds, but I don't need to know what my future holds because I know who holds my future. Praise God. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He's watching over me. My life is anchored in the love of God. My life is anchored in the goodness of God, the Word of God and His promises. He holds my future, and life is worth the living. Just because he lives. Dear ones, we need, our, we, we need a revival of hope and an anchor that will hold through the storm. Let me tell you a story in closing. My dear buddy, he was a high school music teacher. And it was the 1960s. I don't know if you were alive in those days. I was very young in those days. Uh, 1960s, it was a difficult time in this nation. It was maybe, I, I started to say maybe it was worse than today. It may sort of parallel today. It was the Vietnam War era. There was rioting. There was unrest on the school campuses. Uh, one of the, this, the absolute unthinkable, four students at Kent State Universities were shot and killed by National Guardsmen who came in to stop a riot at Kent State over the Vietnam War. I, I think it was the defining, changing moment in our nation. I think the 1960s is when this nation made a break with God and started down the destruction. Anyway, they were very difficult times. And a high school music teacher and his wife had been married. They were talking. And he became very discouraged about what's going on in the nation. And, uh, you know, the, it was just a difficult time, sort of like it is today. And he told his wife, said, I, I don't even know if we want to have children or not. These are just, I don't know if children should be brought into the earth, this nation, the condition it's in. They were so discouraged. He was particularly very discouraged about what's going on. And he was a Christian. His father was a preacher. He was very discouraged about the situation. And... Uh, it just seemed like the earth, the nation was coming unglued. The times were tough. And he sat down one night. She'd gone to bed. He sat down and he opened his Bible and God began to speak to him. Dear ones, thank God for the Spirit of God who speaks to us through the Word of God. And God began to speak to him. And God began to tell him, your future is not determined by what's going on in your nation. Your future is not determined by what you read in the news. I am the God of your future. I'm your future. I hold your future in my hands. Your future is dictated by the promises in this book. And he had a revival of souls sitting there in his recliner that night as God spoke to him and, and banished the darkness and took the discouragement away and filled his heart with confidence and hope that his life was propped up on the promises of God and the Word of God, not what was going on around him. And he just celebrated in his heart. He reached down beside his recliner picked up a yellow legal pad and began to write a song. And the words of that song go like this. God gave His Son. He sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. And life is worth the living just because He lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds my future and life is worth the living just because He lives. And then concerning 
his fear of bringing children into the earth in this difficult time. Verse number two goes, how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy they bring. But even still, the great assurance, this child's uncertain future because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. You recognize that great song. His name was Bill Gaither. And he went on to become a great songwriter and Christian songwriter. But I'm going to tell you something. That, that, what happened to that man that night needs to happen to so many people. In these difficult days, stormy times, things going on. Then the question is not the storm around us. The question is the God who loves us. And the anchor of our soul is His love, His goodness, His word, and His promises. Our lives need to be built on something that never changes. Jesus said this, A wise man builds his house on the rock of my word, and the storm comes, and the rain beats on that house, and it does not fall because it is founded on the rock of my word. Hallelujah! I've got a rock I can build my life on. I've got an anchor of my soul that enters within the veil where Jesus is praying for me and interceding for me. I have built my life and my family on the eternal Word of God, the goodness of God, the heart of God that shall never fail. Dear ones, you do the same thing. We have an anchor for our souls in a time of storm. And I don't care what my future holds. I don't care what your future holds. I've heard people say, boy, my children, what will happen? My children are young. What's... Knock that mess off. Get your hope in God. Teach your children that their lives are not dictated by what happens on this earth, but by who created this earth, the God of creation, who's given us His Word. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, what a Savior. Friend, I love you. Thanks for joining me today. God bless you. Keep hollering, keep shouting, and keep celebrating that Jesus loves us. I has not seen nor has in heard ear heard, nor centered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. You love God and trust Him and let the pieces fall where they may. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and grace. See you next time at the Cowboy Church.